that's a bass, huh? That's a slab crappie, man. It just doesn't get any better. The smallmouth here in Champlain is phenomenal. Well, hey, how you doing, guys? And welcome to another weekend roundup. I hope you folks are doing really good. The weather's getting so much better. I hope you guys are out getting some fish. Got a really good show lined up tonight. I got some, uh, I got Jared Higginbotham coming in from uh, Yakima Bay. He's going to talk to us a little bit about doing some salmon fishing, maybe some lake trout. Um, he's out in the west coast right now fishing so we're going to draw some parallels of how you can get on fish with the yakima baits up in like lake ontario or even some of these spots here where you can get some lake trout so we'll talk about that in a second before we jump in i want to thank a few folks you know of course we got to thank fin seeker river guide service tim keebler has got all those trips lined up for the fall man you guys got to get out on those those walleyes those those muskies will be hitting smallmouth give tim a call at 215-262-4811 and book that trip right now and we want to thank the great folks at Yakima Baits. Be sure you check them out at yakimabait.com. Lots of good products here. We're going to be talking about these salmon and lake trout, so please go check them out. Also, Tony Maja products. You know the fall season's coming. We're going to be getting down those stripers coming down the coast. Be sure you stock up on those number four spoons. Tony will get you on those big fish, no doubt. Also, the Fisherman Magazine and Fisherman.com. Be sure you check out Jim Hutchinson. Gives you all the information you need for the upcoming weekend. And you might even catch me giving you a few tips happening right here in the Poconos. So check them out at the Fisherman.com. So like I said, guys, we're going to talk with uh, Jared Higginbotham. And he's from Yakima Bates. And actually, we were going to bring him on for the video. But right now, he is actually out on the on the Pacific Ocean in the saltwater. And he's fishing right now. Hey, Jared, are you with us, buddy? Yes, sir, man. Hanging out, just chilling along here. That is awesome. I think you're the first interview we ever did while you're actually out in the Pacific Ocean trolling for fish. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good day, man. We uh, Just a little bit ago, we had to run the edge of the Pacific where the uh, Columbia River kind of meets the Pacific Ocean, trying to waiting for those salmon to, you know, come in on this incoming tide and us to hammer a few. We got a few, few small jacks and uh, lost a couple of adults at the boat and, uh, you know, a couple bites. So, yeah, we're having fun. Oh, that is, that is, I am so jealous. I I just love salmon fishing. You know, we used to go up to Lake Ontario a, a lot here. Uh, I'd throw my brother in a truck and my son in the truck. We'd put the boat on the back and we'd head up to Lake Ontario and, you know, just go trolling for three or four days. And it's just a great time. Yeah, it's fun, man. I, I like trolling. You know, I like covering water, seeing new stuff and you learn stuff by, uh, you know, you do being in the water and you can get everybody else involved and they have their own rod and, you know, you trolling. Like they're not casting, so they're less likely to get tangled up or hooking the nose. So right. you know, that helps. Right. Hey, we have a few folks joining us here. I want to say hello to. We got uh, Guy Swoop uh, and Ryan Swoop. Hey, thank you guys for joining us. Jen Wong's joining us. Um, he says, Hey, Jared, how you doing? And Eric Good Eric Goodstall says, Yakima. He's got them with uh, That's the Way to Go. So a lot of guys looking forward to this one here, Jared. Good to see some uh, people Good joining us. So yeah, it's always fun. Yeah, we love joining it live. You know, what I mean, we've had, like I said, we've had a good day. So we're expecting to hope you hook a fish on camera. Too bad I don't have a live video stream like you said, but you know, it'll still be fun. You'll hear some hooting and hollering, I'm sure. Anyway, <laughs> always good to hear hooting and hollering on the boat. So why don't you tell us what's your setup? What are you using for the uh, the salmon out there right now? So what we use out here, man, we run them a lot of them on lead balls and sliders. So I'm right now I'm running a, a lead ball, like a 16 ounce lead ball on a sliding system down to a, a swivel, like a chain bead swivel. And then I've got a triangle flasher, an inline flasher, but a no drag flasher because you know a lot of times we're fishing currents that run from three to six miles an hour here, so no drag helps a lot by uh, keeping your gear getting tangled. I got about four foot of shit down too. A couple of rods I have an anchovy with a spinner, and then um, on the rest of them I have a cut plug here and fresh hair. Okay. Uh, we throw those along and uh, wait for that rod to start popping, and uh, you know wait, 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 and when the thing hits the water and the line's peeling off the reel, snatch it. Reel it in. Have some fun. I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. I think, like I said, I'm sure. totally jealous. <laughs> yeah, it's a great day. I mean, I'm out here in the Pacific Northwest right now. I can see, you know, uh, beautiful trees and a big bridge and a you know, four-mile-wide river right here. And hanging out with my family, catching some salmon. It's been a great day. Well, that, that, that's really good. Now, you say you're drawing that uh, cut plug salmon or su cut plug herring. That's something we don't do a whole lot of out here. I mean, we do use some some meat on a, a rig install, but that cub plug herring is kind of a, I guess, a Northwest thing, I think. Yeah, it's a Northwest and a Canadian thing for sure. You know, we rig them a lot of different ways. I like to cut plug myself because you can kind of, um, 
dictate the speed or the um, size of uh, angle that your herring spins at. So myself, I like a real tight spin, so I cut a pretty um, um, a pretty uh, tight bevel edge, off. and uh, you know you hook them. Uh, when you hook them on there and you drop them down, it just spins. looks just like a bait trying to get away. And so right, right. I like to cut plugs mainly because of the bite, right? When they bite the cut plug, it's a thump. Right. Thump. thump. And they'll follow it and munch on it, munch on it, munch on it. And half the time you got to get it gas. You have to let that rod finally load up and pin to the water. And so, uh, that's the reason I like fishing the herring and the anchovies. He's just watching the bite. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't fishing, but I'm still having fun just watching the rods go off. And it works too. I mean, that's a very effective method for, uh, yeah. Again, that's that's not something a lot of guys here use. And I think if if guys are heading up to Lake Ontario or some of these other places, look up some cut plug herring. It's a really neat technique. You got to watch how you hook it though, and you got to watch the angle on the front of that because, like Jared said, it's going to dictate how that that spins when, when you're trolling it. But it's super effective. It's very very effective. You know, and, and a lot of reason I think a lot of guys don't run them. A lot of the cut plug type style herring, like in your fisheries, because you know you're allowed two and three rods in a lot of those fisheries where you're at, and um, that's a lot of times, and it takes so long to set up, you know, some of those spreads with two or three or four boards out each side, you know, and right. lead rods and downrigger rods and inside divers and outside divers and all this other stuff, right? So um, I get why y'all don't win a lot of bait there. Um, you know, if you're just fishing a single rod or just four or five rods, that would be a little different. But that many rods, it's so hard to keep track of and too hard to really read bait. Um, um, you know, I think it's a no we, mangled, so. no, we get it. Guys, he's got a little bit of wind out there, so bear with us a little bit while he's out there in the, uh, in the Pacific Ocean. So, I mean, he's out there getting some of those salmon staging right up to come up river. It's a hot spot. They call it, what, buoy 10 or something out there, Jared? Yeah, so buoy 10 is actually um, the kind of nickname for the entire fishery. And the reason it's nicknamed that is because the buoy 10 is right where the border of the salmon fishery actually starts for the Columbia meets the ocean. So, the buoy 10 salmon fishery actually ranges about 15 miles up river to what they call Tongue Point. And then everything in between on the Washington and the Oregon side. So it's kind of more of a nickname. It actually takes place centrally located in um, a city called Astoria, Oregon, which is um, uh, you know, just, just off the coast of the, uh, from the ocean, you know, probably six, eight miles. But that's kind of the base city for the fishery is Astoria, Oregon. But the buoy 10 is just the nickname of the fishery itself. Oh, okay. I got you. I thought it was like, I, I was picturing this big buoy, on, you know, coming out of the Colorado River, and that's where yeah, everybody sets up. <laughs> <laughs> no, not so much. But there is a big buoy, you know, there's, there's an actual buoy pen, you know, the, the, the channel bar is going down the barge, yeah. um, the ships and the, you know, fishermen themselves to get in and out. But there is an actual buoy pen, but it's just more or less a border marker for the fishery itself. So it can kind of be iconic um, name for the fishery just due to its, uh, uh, you know, kind of location and the reason it's, it's the border of the fishery. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, to talk a little bit about Yakima baits, I mean, uh, you represent Yakima and that's what a great company. Yes, um, you know, I've used them myself. I think, well, let's talk, first of all, I mean, who doesn't have a rooster tail in their tackle box too, you know, and a flatfish. So why don't you tell folks a little bit about Yakima and some of the baits that you carry? Sure. You know, Yakima baits, a family owned business. It's, it's, it's really cool. It started in the 1934. I'll give you a short, real quick story. Uh, 1934 by R.B. Warden, and uh, you know he said it similar to many businesses out of his garage and station and so on and so forth. And uh, in 1941, he incorporated with some farmer friends of his, and, they, and uh, you know over years they picked up different acquisitions, designed different products. Fifties, and it was actually named after the uh, boat races that take place in Tri City, which is uh, in Eastern Washington. And, uh, you know, the jet boats, they shoot off a rooster tail. And that's okay. how the rooster tail actually got its name, was from the jet boat race. And, you know, that's become an iconic uh, lure. And then the spinning glow, you know, just a few years later, that followed. And over time, you know, Yakima yeah, Bates had many different, you know, great designs. Also acquisitions, buying human flatfish in the uh, late 90s and Hildebrandt in the 2000s and just different things. And, uh, you know, we sell a lot of different products. You know, a lot of people say, well, what's Yakima yeah, Bates? And you start mentioning different products like Corky's and and flatfish and timber tigers and um you know just different things and um people have, you know they've used them somewhere down the line right sure so, sure yeah. so are, and, are uh, you are you using so any you uh, all those things pretty neat are you using any yakima baits out there today or are you just using the, the cup plug herring no i'm actually using some yakima bait products today and so on one rod i've got uh, one of the blades that we make which is a mulkey blade which is uh designed by terry mulkey who's a uh, long time you know 45 year fishing guy designed a uh 
a faceted cascade style blade that puts off a lot of light. And so we've got a copper, uh, it's one of our copper style blades. We have that in front of the anchovy. The water's a little off, so it's just kind of adding a little vibration and a little, uh, a little sightseeing for the fish to see on there. So that's one of our products. We also have uh, the inline flashers, which are called the fish flash. Flash is a uh, triangular shaped flasher that um, creates no drag in the water, and it rotates over itself on its own axis about every one, one to one and a half seconds. You know, shooting off horizontal beams of light. It kind of attracts the shape of this bait ball theory, correct? So, right. Um, I've got one of these on each rod because we're wanting to attract those fish in, saying, "Hey, you know, we got some you know, bait ball over here. Come over, have a party, and then we got a bait." Right. Four, ringing four that four dinner bell behind it. What's that? You're ringing that dinner bell, basically. Yeah, ringing the dinner bell. That's what we're doing. And, you know, we've got different colors on. You know, obviously, you want some contrast and give them some reasons to come in. And at certain times, certain colors do work better than others. But uh, for now, at this point in time, you know, we're using um, lots of pinks, oranges, and greens is kind of where we're at with those. You know, because salmon kind of like those colors. So. Right, right. Now, you're going for what, kings out there right now? Yeah, Chinook. So, um, right now, we can keep one hatchery Chinook and one ha- – uh, uh, or, sorry, we can keep one Chinook and one hatchery coho. So, on a Chinook, it can be a hatchery or a wild fish. And on a coho, it has to be a hatchery fish, which means it has to have its adipose fin clipped off. Okay. That's mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Was a- so, yeah, I've had some buddies catch some in the 35, 37, 39 pound range. I mean, it's great thing this year. Really good grade of fish this year, a lot bigger fish. So uh, we're assuming ocean conditions were good and everything um, when they hung the right uh, and headed up north towards Alaska went good for them. You know, four or five years ago when they took off, because this grade of fish has been a really, really, really hefty grade of fish. You know, so um, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, and I know we do a lot of uh, salmon fishing up in Lake Ontario. I think I was talking to you earlier about that, um, and and we use the um, the flatfish. Um, I actually use them for lake trout. Um, one of the big techniques up there is you, you'll see them on the on the flasher, and you're in like a hundred and you know thirty hundred forty feet of water. And you'll see those Lakers laying right on the bottom. We'll put those big cowbells on there, those big, big spinners. And we'll put a little tiny flatfish on a, on like a 24-inch leader behind them. And, boy, that is just so effective when you just drag them up right off the bottom. We get we get the Lakers all day long. Yeah, you know, I was telling you earlier that Lakers are kind of like me. They want a big, fat, slow, lazy meal they don't have to work too hard for. And that's a flatfish for you, right? Like, the flatfish comes by. It runs really, really good at slow speeds, right? It's got a big, wide wiggle. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and big, big head shake and wiggle, you know. And so um, those lake trout love those. And, uh, um, you know, we use them a lot for lake trout here. And we actually wrap them a lot for lake trout. You know, a lot of fish we have, we have um, you know, mixed species similar to what you guys probably have. You know, different species of lake trout in those uh, those lakes. But we'll have, like, kokanee or trout in there. And so we'll take, like, a trout belly and kokanee belly and actually take some a stretchy thread and wrap it on the belly of the flatfish for added scent and then drag the flatfish out for, um, for the lake trout and just kind of add some scent. We do the same thing for salmon on some of our plugs, wrap them with sardines or okay. herring or tuna bellies or so on and so forth. So Th- That's cool. Don't you have a, uh, a one of your lures that you can open up and actually put uh, bait inside of it? So, yeah. So, I'm actually fishing one of those, too. So, that's called a spin fish. And so, what the spin fish is, it's a pull-apart um, bait lure with an easy-fill bait chamber, right? And so... Literally just comes apart. You pull it apart right in the middle, and you stuff the um, head of the plug and the tail of the plug with uh, um, you know whatever bait you choose. I mean, if you're fishing for salmon, you know it could be tuna, herring, um, shrimp, plain sardine, or whatever. And if you're fishing for say maybe walleye, maybe you fill it up with chopped up nightcrawler, chopped up leeches, or you know those types of things. Um, you know, so it's a really versatile bait that has a lot of application for pretty much any of the fishery. And it's a uh, you know it's a rotating bait, so as you pull it. It has two different pull point settings. You know, you can put it through um, the top left setting, which makes the lure spin clockwise, or the top right setting, which makes the lure spin counterclockwise. Okay. And so it kind of gives you a lot of options to just on the, you know, to kind of figure out what the fish want as far as that. And there's no speed tolerance on it either. You can tolerate, you know, at one quarter mile an hour all the way up to, you know, six to eight miles an hour if you can keep it down underneath the water. So pretty versatile, mate. very easy to use. And uh, you can create your own cook and cook configuration behind it on a snell leader, however you like. And, mm-hmm. uh, Whatever is most effective for your fishery, or whatever is legal, you know, it could be a single barbless thing, or you know, no trouble allowed, or so on and so forth. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that. That sounds like a really interesting debate. I've yet to try them, but I think I'm definitely going to try them next time I get out and do some trolling. I bet you they would even be uh, killer for some of these stripers here we got in our freshwater lakes. That sounds, especially oh, with some bait. Without in there. question. Yeah, put yeah. some herring in and there. Especially and, like you, they'd be great in Lake Ontario. 
um, you know, behind your guys' style, you know, rotating um, style flasher, you know, like the fish pro trolls and spin doctors and different things like that, your right. flasher fly combination. Well, the spin fish would work just in place of the flasher fly or flasher and spinning glow for a lake trout set combination, you know. So, um, you know, it's a really easy transition for your, ty- your, your types of fisheries. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. Hey, you want to welcome Jay Batches joining us. Jay, how you doing today, buddy? Good to see you joining us. Uh, we're out here talking with uh, Jared Higginbotham with uh, Yakima Bates. He's out there uh, fishing salmon right out there in the Pacific Ocean right now, right outside the Colorado River. And he's on a troll as we speak. So if you hear a bunch of hooting and hollering, they probably hooked up. So we'll have to give a little leeway on that one. So yeah, the, the Columbia here is an honorary animal. I tell you what, we're about to go underneath the uh, Story Bridge. If you ever seen any more in the uh, stories or movies or like the Goonies or, uh, you know, Kindergarten Cop or any of those types of shows and you see the Astoria Bridge in the background, we're literally, we're about to cross right underneath that thing right now. Um, which is a pretty good spot for fish, actually. I've caught quite a few fish there because it's really the first structure that the uh, salmon see coming into a river system out of the ocean. So um, it's been a good source of fish for me over the years. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I, I imagine. Uh, we get a couple more comments. Eric Goodstall says that uh, belts fill browns on the spin fisher and flatfish. Yeah, I think that's without a doubt. We got some really big browns in this lake. It's a deep lake. It's about 100 and some feet deep, at, at, uh, about 130 feet at the deepest. But there are some giant browns in there that we, we pick up trolling once in a while. So, Eric, you're, you're absolutely right. And uh, Jay Batcha says he's jealous, too. Yeah, I don't blame you, Jay. I, I wish I was out there. <laughs> I got to tell you what, yeah. uh, you know, mutual friend of ours, uh, Ted Johnson, uh, he's inviting me out there next next fall to go out and do a little fishing. Maybe we can get out there in that river with you and uh, the three of us hook up and do a little salmon fishing, too. Yeah, give me a shot, man. It'd be great for all of us. You know, I'm there hooting hard, having fun, you know, and just kind of discuss fishing. And, uh, you know, I think that'd be great. I mean, I'd be all up for that, for sure. No, absolutely. Like said, he'd probably want to go uh, for sure because he's like the world's best backhand, and I don't... Uh, he generally doesn't let me leave home without him. So. Right. That'd be really yeah. cool. Hey, we talked a lot about your trolling lures. I mean, Yakima's got a great portfolio of baits on there. But uh, I know there's a couple guys watching that are really into trout fishing, even some of these streams and stuff. And uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the rooster tails? I mean, uh, the lineage of that. And um, just talk about the baits a little bit. Yeah, you know, the rooster tail is a great bait. Uh, it's such a versatile bait. So the rooster tail comes in about 200 different colors, right? And it comes in 10 different sizes, all the way from an 8th ounce up to a 1 ounce, or sorry, a 32nd ounce, all the way up to a 1 ounce size. So you pretty much got every color, size, um, you know, and configuration imaginable for your type, style, or uh, species of fish that you're targeting. So, um, you know, it's an inline weight. It's made out of lead, uh, and it does have a very, 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 very good castability, especially when you're fishing in the wind and things. Um, and its retrieval rate is very, 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 very easy. So as you can fire this thing out there and, and just cast and retrieve, you know, and pretty much anyone can do that. So that's why it's one of those really, really versatile, very easy lures for people to use is because uh, um, you can just cast it, retrieve it. You can vertical jig it. You can troll it. Um, you know, I've used them on a bobber before. Used them behind Dodgers. Uh, done lots of different things with them that, uh, uh, you know, would think it's just a kind of a one trick pony and it's really not and so a lot of people caught their first fish on it sure as you were talking about earlier um you know the stories for rooster tail when i travel for work i wear a yakima bait shirt and people are like oh what do you do well if i wear a rooster tail shirt they're like oh my god, my god. oh my god. oh my god. what was the first one i ever saw yep my buddy gave me one of these oh let me tell you my rooster tail story which is a really 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 neat story in itself right yeah Anybody that can have um that many stories, that many people stop you in a public place and just kind of let you know their story, share a little bit of their life with you, how fishing has changed their life or the reason you have. It's kind of a cool story. So It, it really is. Of, uh, the puzzle, right? Well, I, I know a lot of folks out this way, like a matter of fact, uh, the guy watching Eric Goodstall, he's uh, caught a couple of fish actually this morning on them, and we'll see him in some of the trophy board that we have up later. But, yeah, he got himself a nice brook trout on them uh, this weekend. So they, they definitely work in the area here. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you know, um, the rooster tail works for about every trout species. And we've got five different versions of the rooster tail. We've got the Vibrick rooster tail, which is a, uh, you know, kind of an offset body. Um, and it's got a, uh, you know, the wire goes through the blade on that design. So it's got a lot of vibration, a lot of flash, and the keeled body helps the, uh, reduce your line twist. Okay. And so it's kind of a different version than the original rooster tail. Then we've got the Sonic rooster tail, which is a French blade. So it gives a different vibration than the standard uh, Willow-style blade for the rooster tail. You got a super rooster tail, which looks like a spinner bait for a bass. 
And then um, we've got the rooster tail minnow, which has a minnow body. So, right. uh, you know, all those things. Oh, oh. 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 Maybe we a little bump and a little drive by action on the rod. We, I want to. I want to hear you get a fish while we're talking here. Everybody wants to hear hear you get that savage. <laughs> hey, trust me, I'm cheering for that same thing, and I'm sure all the people in my boat are cheering for that same thing right now. So. It's going to um, happen. You know that. Yeah, it's going to happen. Sorry, I just turned the, the boat around. The wind gets a little little bit worse this direction here. We're just sitting right above the bridge, like I said, hovering right in front of the uh, the bridge itself, hoping that one of these uh, salmon that are cruising by, uh, you know, crush our lures. Generally, we try to troll with the tide. If the tide comes in, we try to troll in with it. If the tide goes out, we try to troll down river with it. Right. Um, that gives us the opportunity to come in front and more fish because uh, the fish generally face into the current. Um, so, you know, we try to go out of similar to when you're, if you're driving the wrong way down the freeway on the wrong side of the road, you're going to come in with a lot, contact with a lot more cars than you would just on your own side of the road, right? <laughs> sure. It's, it's also a more natural presentation when you go with the flow of things too. So. Right, 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 right. So that's great. Um, what other tips you think you have for guys out East that, uh, you know, you guys really have it dialed in out there in the Northwest for salmon and stuff. How about us guys in the East? What kind of tips do you have for us? You know, um, I think it's just try different things. You know, I mean, all your salmon really came from our hatcheries, right? And so these are kind of our fish. I would Google a lot of the things that we do out there and uh, techniques that we kind of um, um, developed or are developing or new tips and trends because, um, you know, they really are fish. And the genetics really don't change much. They still react the same way. Anytime I've been out there and fished the salmon in those regions, I fish them very similar to the uh, the way I fish them here, just, just for testing reasons, right? Because my buddy's like, no, that won't work. I'm like, well, man, these are my fish. It's really genetics. Um, for sure they will. So, um, you know, it's kind of one of those types of deals. Yeah, I agree because it's. Uh, I think it's really good. I mean, especially nowadays when you have like podcasts like this, you got YouTube. There's lots of places to go get information where you can find techniques that work in our area as well as around the country. So try different things like that and try out some baits. Now, also, Jared, I think you got a, a nice little surprise for us for the winner of our uh, our trivia contest today, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we'll get down a salmon gift prize pack to you. You know, probably consists of some fish flash or a spinner or a thin fish or one of our maglip or, you know, flatfish type plugs. Um, you know, definitely get you out of uh, a nice little uh, care package that will help put some more salmon in the box. Oh, that'd be um, great. Um, so, so, yeah, so definitely get you a nice little prize pack, and I'll send that out when I get back to work on Monday. Yeah, um, that's – so, you guys, you got to get to the trivia question today because you got to – a really nice pack of Yakima baits heading your way to get you on some of these salmon and Lakers this, this season. Okay. All yeah, right. that'd be great. Yeah, it will be. I can't wait. Well, I'm really hoping we get a chance to get out and fish with you, Jared. You know, it's, uh, it, it's one of those things I've never really been in Northwest fishing. It's something that's on my, my to-do list within the next year or so. So maybe we'll be able to hook up and get together with maybe my buddy Ted out there and do a little bit. Yeah, that'd be great. It'd be a lot of fun. I think if all of us got out and chance to do that, um, you know, and it's always good when you can show somebody else part of your fishery too, right? Right, right. All righty. Well, any else, Any questions for uh, Jared, guys? We're going to leave it open for you, and if not, we're going to let him get back to his fishing. I'm sorry we didn't get a fish while you're on the on the call here. That would have been fantastic. Oh, you know how the curse of the camera works, right? I could have <laughs> been catching a fish every ten minutes all day, and uh, you know it would have. Uh, wouldn't even have mattered because as soon as the camera went on or the radio started. Yeah. Uh, right. That would have pretty much been over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if you get a fish, you got to call us back. And if we're still on the air, we'll, we'll put you on. You can tell us what you caught. All right. Yeah. If I get a fish, I will definitely do that for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, Jared, we're going to let you get back to the, to the fishing. Hope you and the family have a good time. Go catch a bunch for us and be sure you guys all check out Yakima baits at yakimabaits.com great products i mean i say everybody's been using these their whole life but get out and check them out lots of things for salmon trout and whatever you fish they're a great company Jarrett, thank you so much for your time i really appreciate i mean you're in the middle of fishing how, how can it get any better than this what was that i said it's it's a great interview you're in the middle of fishing how can it get any better than that <laughs> yeah it was great man i just fired up my big motor to go underneath the ridge right in the middle of the interview so you know, have my reel the rod. It's kind of one of those in action type things. I love it. You yeah, know, it is good stuff. That's real life, real action. You know, um, on the water. You know, it doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't. 
Well, we'll catch you again soon, Jared. Again, thank you for taking time to talk to us. And uh, again, say our, our best to everybody out there on the West Coast, okay? Thanks, my man. I appreciate it. You have a great rest of your weekend. All right. You too, Jared. Bye-bye. Well, what do you think, guys? That was absolutely great. I just love talking to people that, that do a lot of things that we like to do out here. You, you know, the salmon fishing is fantastic. I love heading up to Lake Ontario, but there's some options out here, too. I mean, there's a lake trout over in New Jersey. We do it at Round Valley. Uh, there's salmon over there, too, as well. So there's a lot of good fishery fishing out in this area that we can use this kind of style and product as well. But you know what that means? That's going to bring up our trophy board for the week. Let's see what you guys are catching out here because there's a lot of fish that you guys have been sending. The season is starting to pick up, so we're getting a lot of really good fish in. Well, just to tell you, here's Jared Higginbotham. So you can see what he looked like. He was supposed to get have us on video today, but he couldn't. But there's the salmon he's getting off there, off the, uh, the Colorado River. I wish we could have been there. So, Jared, good work there. Um, here we got Ryan Sturgis. He's been out on that... Um, He's been out on that yellow fin bite. You know, that's been picking up really well. Uh, they've been hitting jigs, and, and uh, Ryan picked this one up on a jig. I forget how many miles he said he was out, but what a great little bite. Hey, Jen Wong uh, sent me one. This is actually from the spring. It's kind of a throwback photo, but, yeah, we'll take them any all day long. Look at the size of that bass. Great work, Jen. Thank you. Hey, also, uh, Tony Clifford. Here's another one from the northwest up by Oregon. Uh, out there, Salmon, right, right where Jared's fishing right now. You can see he got a really nice, I think that was, uh, it was right out by Bowie 10 as well. I think it was a 37 pound salmon and some really nice looking steaks there as well. How about that for dinner? And then we got uh, Justin Lerner. You know, he's been out there getting those pike and everything else, but he's also been getting into some of these uh, flathead catfish. And you can see that's a really nice little trophy flathead. I'd love to get into one of them. They just fight like crazy. And our good friend, Eric Goodstall. Now, he caught this little brookie on, the, on one of those rooster tails from Yakima Bait. So they work really good local as well. Great catch there, Eric. And I know the uh, trout season is going to start picking up. So you and I will have to get out real soon and try that again. Also, want to talk about Ryan Swope. He got into a really nice little muskie here on the Delaware River. I think it was a 13 and a half pounder right up on the Delaware. And that whole season is starting to come in with the muskies and the cooler water fish. So I'm really looking forward to getting out with Tim Keebler and doing some of that myself. And kind of wrapping things up, I got my good friend, John DeBona from the Fisherman Magazine. And he was out with his grandson. They were picking up a couple of uh, cocktail blues off the surf there. So a, a couple of little uh, great fishing out there with the guys and especially the family. So it's always good to get out. All righty. So what's going to bring up next is we're going to have our trivia giveaway. And remember, this is going to be a nice little salmon surprise pack from Yakima Bates. Uh, the winner is going to get this mailed out to him and that'll come right from y Yakima uh, as well. So let's see if we can get the question. The question this week is a walleye is a member of what family of fish? Is it a pike, the perch, or the trout family? Which family does the walleye belong to? First person that gives me that correct answer will win the Yakima Bates Salmon Surprise Pack. Come on, guys. First person gets it. Ryan Swoop gets the perch correct good job there ryan all right we're going to give you a, a call after the show get your your mailing information and we'll get that over to yakima baits and mail you that salmon surprise pack congratulations uh jay you just missed it buddy <laughs> everybody's got the right answer they're just a few minutes too late well i'll tell you what you guys try again next week and uh we'll have another uh, great great uh, prize for you guys Boy, everybody's got the right answer this week. I usually have a hard time getting the answer. Well, thank you so much for playing. But uh, yeah, Ryan Swoop, he got it this week. And why is my computer going nuts? Probably just because. Anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up this week's show. Again, we got a couple people to thank. Tim Keepler and Fin Seeker Guide Service, 215-262-4811. Get that fall trip booked right now. He's going to start filling up because the fishing is going to get hot. Give Tim a call again, 25 262 4811. Again, the good friends at Yakima Bait Company, check them out at yakimabaits.com. Tony Maja Products and the Fisherman Magazine, always good to have them guys on board. And don't forget, 
Please send me those picks, send me your comments, suggestions, uh, Pocono, Georgia, Outlook.com. We'd love to hear from you. And please check out my new website, PoconoOutdoorsGuide.com. We'd love to he hear your feedback on that. I got blogs going on there, fishing reports, and you can even send a comment there as well. So really great to have everybody uh, on board. We'll see you next week. We'll work on another great show. Get out and get on those fish, guys, and send me those picks. We'll talk soon. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.